we're doing here is we're going to go over some of the maintenance checkpoints and uh, uh, situation grease locations of uh, New Holland compact track loader. This is very similar to the rubber tired skid loader uh, as far as all the grease points and such. The tracks are just a little bit of a change up on them. All the points on this machine, like I said, are similar to the, the rubber tires. You have your grease points down here for your lashing mechanism. Um, the bucket cylinders here have self-lubricating bushings on them, so uh, they don't have any up here, but the lower ones all do. All the pivot points on the loader, uh, such as here, 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 they all have greasing fittings on them also. Wherever you see a pivot, uh, at that point there is uh, grease fittings. The tracks have a gearbox here, and that, is, uh, that has to be checked in, uh, for oil or uh, changed. As a rule, in our dealership, we change that oil whenever we do an engine oil change to keep both of them fresh at the same time. To tension the track so you don't have too much play in them, which this is, this is right where it's supposed to be. You shouldn't have too much deflection. Uh, of quick visuals, the track looks pretty straight on the top and pretty straight on the back. When you start seeing it get loose, it'll start to round off in the back a little bit more. And um, at that point, if it gets that loose, you have a chance of losing the track on a hillside or have it come off in a hard push forward. To adjust those, there's a grease fitting underneath this cover that you uh, put your gun on and uh, pump grease into it until it stretches the track out. There's a spring tensioner in the front that uh, compresses and holds it in the tension position unless you over grease it to the point where you're beyond that spring tension and uh, that uh, that'll be obviously too too tight and you'd be stretching the track. But as long as you have very minimal deflection, uh, you're in the right, right position with it. One of the things that's been changed on these tracks system versus the prior one is this wide open space in between here. That comes into play for when you're in muddy conditions and such that you have an easier ability for the dirt to fall out and get back in the ground instead of uh, getting trapped in here or uh, in wintertime freezing in here and making the track non-movable. Um, very much wide, more wide open, uh, newer design. This is uh, the gearbox oil, oil fill and level height. If this was at the top, very straight up, this would be the oil level fill check. You'd fill it here until it was coming out of here. At the point of draining it, you would have this rotated to the bottom. Yep. So you would get maximum oil out. This one is in too close to the center. That would get the most oil out when you drain it. In the back, everything is uh, ground level check. You have your engine oil fill, your engine oil check, your radiator check, your fuel fill. Everything is similar to the rubber tire machine. The rest of the machine, as we go around, all the checkpoints are uh, the same as uh, a rubber tired skid loader. In the back here is where you would be checking your engine oil and hydraulic oils and do your fills. That is done easily here. The cap over on this side is your diesel fuel fill. This yellow one here, that's your engine oil check. Your engine oil fill is in the center, in the middle of the engine here. Hydraulic oil fill is off on this other side here. And there is a hydraulic oil level sight glass on the side inside of here. And uh, you do that check with the loader on the ground. Your battery is down below here. And you could, if you have to jump onto that for a, a remote fuel tank, DC powered or something, you can access it there. Or if you have to jump start it for some reason, you can start it there. Block heater cord is tied in this area if you choose to use that. Uh, your battery is behind here. This is an access panel that you can access the battery for servicing it if you have to. There's also a panel on the top that you can access for servicing. If you had counterweights on that would be bolted on these two points, you would not be able to get behind here for that. And uh, down below here, this is a plate to remove to change your engine oil and change your engine oil filter. They're both uh, underneath that cover. On the back door is your fuel filter and primer pump. On this side, very similar to the other side. Uh, all the pivots are greasable, have fittings. The axles have the uh, fittings for, for greasing. Now we'll move into the interior of the cab. This particular machine has got the dual arm wiper blade, which allows it to cover more area of the windshield on a single pass instead of a single arm that would, would not necessarily cover your full range of sight that you would like to see from inside the cab. It is also a lockable cab with a key. This is your connect under pressure hydraulic port so if you had an attachment when you push in on it, it'll push back. 
So it'll relieve the pressure and bleed the oil back to the tank so you can connect up. This particular machine is set up with high flow hydraulics. These two top couplers are larger couplers and they are used for uh, high flow attachments. The lower three couplers here, the center one is the case strain. The outside two are the standard flow connectors. First thing you do when you get inside the cab, install your seat belt, which is behind you on your uh, left side. If you happen to be getting in the machine and sitting too long, so I can go to start the machine, you may have to unbuckle, get out of the seat, and reset down to reset the computer so the machine will be able to start. On your left hand control, we have a series of buttons. This is your two speed button, your high and low. These two buttons here, Cylinder 2 and Cylinder 3 are for your 14 pin connector and those are, are run just for that connector for your auxiliary hydraulics. The lower one with the arrows on it, that is your turn signals for right and left. On your other control, this is also uh, function number one uh, for your 14 pin connector. This is the switch that turns the, the connector box on to activate all of those other functions. That is for your remote hydraulics, whether it be high pressure or high flow, or standard flow. It's for all the, the functions out of that valve bank. Above that is your hand throttle. That sets your RPM of your engine. In cold weather, when you first start it up, if it's uh, extremely cold, no matter where you put this, it will maintain an idle speed. It will not rev up until the engine is at a certain temperature that will allow the engine to go without getting damaged. The next switch below that is here is your light switch which is for headlights and running lights. This next switch here is for your parking brake. Say you stop and you want to set the brake but you don't want to get out of the seat right away. Get out of the seat, parking brake automatically goes on, but this will allow you to, to set the brake without having to get out of the seat. This four button pad here, to start the machine, you would hit power first, then you would hit start and the engine would start up, and in order for anything to, to function you'd have to hit operate. If you had a function like a water pump or something that you wanted the machine to sit still and run without you being in it, you could hit this auxiliary button and that would enable the auxiliary hydraulics to run and not have to be in the seat. These are also your, your sight glass readings for what you have for hydraulic temperature, water temperature, and your fuel gauge levels. Above that is your hour meter and then these are your warning lights for any function that might be uh, going bad. Currently you're seeing parking brake is on and there's an operator in the seat but no seat belt on it at this time. Your other control side, starting at the bottom, is your windshield wiper and washer. Above that is HF and HP. This machine isn't equipped with high pressure, high flow, it's just equipped with standard high flow. So no matter which position this one goes into, it will only be high flow, standard high flow, not high pressure. The one above that, this is the warning flasher. That's for your four ways. There, which turns your turret signals into four-way flashers. The one above it here is a strobe light. That activates the plug in the back of the cab, a magnet mounted strobe light to your roof. The light above it, all that does is tells you that uh, the high speed is on when you're uh, running the switch down below. It just activates and uh, illuminates. Above it here is your turn signal indicators. tells you whether your flashers are going or whether your uh, turn signals are on. Above that is your fan speeds for your heater and your temperature control for your heater. Moving to your side windows, as they get dirty, you may want to take them out and clean them. They're easily opened by squeezing this handle and sliding it back. In front, there's two knobs. One is for, for uh, unlocking the slide, and the other one unlocks the latch. You see a window here that's green. As you pull that back, it releases and turns to red. That allows you to lower this rail and take the glass out if you like to do so to clean windows. You do the same thing in the back. Move it forward with the same type of a window, and at that point it'll lower the rear one, and you can take the rail out and remove the glass complete to, to clean it or to leave it out for summertime. Behind the operator's seat is a yellow triangle. That is a safety e e exit, so if you turn the machine over and it happens to land on the front of it where you can't get out your normal exit, you can pull that triangle and release the window and climb out through the back of the cab. Behind the seat on the left side is your windshield washer fill point, which you fill from inside the cab. Straight ahead of that, there's a red button. This button here is used, say the engine, uh, you ran it out of fuel and the loaders were up in the air, you couldn't open the door, 
you didn't want to pull the rear window open to get out because you, uh, you, you'd rather not do that and have to put it back in. You can pull that button and it will lower the lower arms back to the ground so you can exit safely. On the opposite side of the seat is a red lever and that gets turned. When you turn it in toward yourself and you have the lower arms up in the air, it activates a safety latch so, so that you can work on the machine without the loader being on the ground and not have to worry about it uh, coming down on top of you. The two stick levers, left and right, are for your forward and reverse travel since this is a hand and foot control. So this will drive the, the right hand side of the machine and the other one will drive the left hand side of the machine. The two pedals on the floor run your loader operations. Uh, one side runs your bucket and one side runs your loader lift. In the event that you want to run this with your cab door off, you have to unplug this plug, but when you do that, that makes it so the loader won't operate because it senses the door is open. It will not run. So you have to activate it again with this uh, bypass plug and put that in place. To remove the door, it's just a matter of unhooking a few things like that and lifting the door off. It's ready to come off. Just lift it off the hinges and your, your cab no longer is enclosed. All cab models come equipped with, uh, with the radio and a port for plugging in your iPod.